szem. Nálad biztosan senki sem tud többet erről a témáról, hiszen te a világ legnagyobb adatbázisával rendelkezel. Ahogy mondtad is, az elmúlt évtizedekben kb. 1700 diagnosztizált narcisztikussal töltettél ki részletes kérdőívet, amely alapján a szexualitásokat is megértetted. Volt egy mondatod a legutóbbi interjú során, miszerint te sosem találkoztál még olyan narcisztikussal, akinek normális lett volna a szexuális élete. Ezzel én is így vagyok. Kérlek, beszéljünk most erről a témáról őszintén, ahogy te szoktad, ítélkezés nélkül, mert azt hiszem ezzel rengeteg embernek segíthetünk megérteni, hogy mi történik vele. Fontos ez a narcisztikusnak és az áldozatnak is. Kezdjük az egyik leggyakoribb viselkedés formával, a BDSM-mel. A magyar emberek sem értik sokszor, hogy mi ez így, szerintem fontos megmagyarázni. A Wikipédiában ez áll. A BDSM egy gyűjtő szó, az angol bondage and discipline, domination, submission, sadism and masochism szavakból képzett rövidítés. Magyarul kötözés, fegyelmezés, dominancia, alávetettség és szadizmus, mazohizmus fogalmakat jelöl. Korábban egyszerűen szadomazohizmusnak hívták. A BDSM olyan szexuális viselkedésformák gyűjtő neve, ahol szexuális élvezet keltését célzó szerepjátékokban szélsőségesen elválik az irányító és az alárendelt szerep. Két szereplője az aktív utasításokat adó úr, dom vagy úrnő, domina, mistress, és a passzív szenvedő, szolga, a száb. Switchnek azt nevezzük, akit a dom, domina és a szubszerep is kielégít, tehát néha alárendelt, néha irányító felett testesít meg. Az élvezetet vagy nemi élvezetet itt a fájdalom adása és elviselése, a kiszolgáltatottság, megalázottság érzete és más hasonló érzelmek irányítják, generálják, amelyekben csak részben vagy egyáltalán nem kap szerepet a nemi aktus. A BDSM együttléteket a résztvevők szeánszként emlegetik, aminek a szerves része szokott lenni a fetisizmus és a különböző szerepjátékok alkalmazása is. Ilyenkor nem mindig van jelen a fájdalom okozása, hanem a szituáció, a kommunikáció, jellemzően a szub becsmérléséről beszélünk, illetve bizonyos anyagok, tipikusan latex, bőr, gumi vagy más, és azokból készült ruhák vagy bizonyos tárgyak, például alsónemű, cipő, csizma, szexuális segédeszköz, esetleg a testrészek puszta érintése, simogatása váltja ki a nemi izgalmat. Mivel a BDSM szemben a nemi aktussal alapesetben nem a testi kapcsolat révén okoz kielégülést, nagyon egyéniek ezek a vágyak és ábrándok. Gondolom az aláfölé rendeltség és a hierarchia miatt oly népszerű a BDSM a narcisztikusok körében. Kérlek szem, mesélj részletesen arról, hogy milyennek a pszichológiai háttere. It depends critically on, on the type of BDSM practice. In proper BDSM, there is actually no dominance or submission. The parties are partners. They negotiate a role play, like theater, where one of them plays the submission, submissive, and one of them plays the dominant. The submissive has a lot of say. She can stop the, I'm saying she because most submissive are women. She can stop the, the act. She can direct the act. She can say, don't do this, do this. She can, so, in typical BDSM, because there are extreme forms of BDSM, like surrender, like, I'm, I'm not talking about this, but in typical BDSM, the BDSM, by the way, that is practiced by 15%, 1-5% of uh, adult population in America, in the United States. It's much more common than people know. So in this type of uh, BDSM, it's accepted that the bottom, the sub, has equal power to the top, sometimes more. And because there is this equipotence, there's no really question of control or dominance. It's a question of partnership, negotiation, and the joy of making a movie. Uh, and in this movie, each actor, of course, takes the part that fits his character and gives him the maximum pleasure. I don't think, for example, I would like to, if I participated in a movie, I don't think I would like to have been an athlete. I don't think it will give me much pleasure. But I would love to play a professor at a university. It's the same. You know, when I come to a submissive, I'm a dom, come to a submissive. That's what makes her tick. 
It gives her pleasure. It gives me pleasure. We play there. Moreover, switching. Switching is when dom becomes sub, sub becomes dom. Very common. In about 40% of cases, in 40% of incidents, 40% of uh, sex acts, BDSM sex acts, there is switching. Uh, many doms ex uh, like to experience submission. And it's less common with submiss submi submissives. Subs less commonly become doms. But doms pretty often become subs. So there is this element of switching as well. And finally, depends crucially on context and circumstances. You can be a dom, and suddenly you find a partner, and with that partner, you're sub, not dom. So it's not rigid, not structured, not in the genes, not in the, it's a role play, negotiated, and, and so on. In this sense, BDSM does not fit narcissists. Narcissists do not like to negotiate. They hate to be with equal power, equipotence. And they definitely don't adhere to any contracts and agreements and uh, what. And they also hate to invest themselves, to, to have to think, what am I doing? Does it give her pleasure? Narcissists don't care if they give pleasure to someone. It's, they, it's, they are auto-erotic. They are focused on themselves as the source of erotic pleasure. They masturbate with other people's bodies. End of story. So narcissists would be very bad in BDSM, actually. However, many practices are subsumed under BDSM, which actually have little to do with classic BDSM. And these are extreme forms of BDSM, and there the narcissist finds pleasure. This is the BDSM, for example, BDSM which, which is um, the kind of kink that involves humiliation that gives a narcissist pleasure because of the humiliation. There is element here of dominance, converting the woman to a prostitute, uh, humiliating her, punishing her. Narciss, narciss is the outcome of a woman who tortured him. He wants to punish all women. He's a misogynist. He hates women. So humiliation BDSM will work. Violent BDSM, choking, nipple pinching, I mean, Shibari, this kind of things would appeal to a narcissist, absolutely. Um, the kinds of activities that involve uh, body fluids and body secretions and body, um, that's, as I said, because a narcissist is still largely a baby, uh, still a child. So this would appeal, appeal to him, and especially if this can be done to someone. This, this would appeal to him. The, the female in the couple, if the narcissist is a male, the female in the couple represents the narcissist himself, <coughs> represents a side of him that is suppressed and represents the, the, all the women who have wronged him, starting with his mother. So it's a combination. When he humiliates or subjugates or hurts, physically hurts a woman, he's doing it to the part of him that he wants to suppress, but also to all the women who wronged him. That's why narcissistic, narcissists within these scenes are dangerous, actually. They don't know where to stop. They, are, they're very, they become very violent. They lose it. They become violent and dangerous. Proper practitioners of BDSM are balanced people. They know when to stop, when to start. They are totally in self-control. They are, um, I told you I, um, that studies that we conducted in the last 10 years, discovered that people who practice BDSM are happier, happier and more mentally healthy than the general population. Not less, more and happier. Consequently, in 2013, the Committee of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual removed BDSM <coughs> from the DSM. So, but the narcissist doesn't practice BDSM. He he borrows, borrows techniques from BDSM. He borrows instruments, tools. He, he borrows from BDSM and makes it his own BDSM. And, and like he does with everything else, by the way. Narciss is never happy with what exists. It has to be his way. His way or the highway. So he borrows from BDSM and then he creates his own BDSM uh, universe, which is very often risky and, and, and so on. 
And yes, within this universe, it's intended to punish women, humiliate them, punish via humiliation usually, but also violence very often, and intended to punish the feminine side of himself, which he resents and rejects and, and so on. So narcissists would be extreme homophobes, for example. The narcissists would, would you know, attack homosexuals and so on, because they are latent homosexuals. They are latent homosexuals because they are autoerotic. They're in love with the men themselves. And so you see, it's, narcissist sexuality is a mess. You can't, unfortunately, categorize it. It's a mess. So effectively, when he humiliates a woman, subjugates her, dominates her, controls her, and finally hurts her physically, wounds her, chokes her, I mean, steps on her, whatever, this, in effect, is a homosexual act. It doesn't look like it because he's interacting with a woman. But he is actually denying his feminine part so that he can be left only with his male part, with whom he is in love. He's making love to himself by killing the woman's side, eliminating the woman's side. These are all, in other words, not sex acts. They are rituals. These are rituals. It's very ritualized. And that's why narcissists are very attached to external things, like specific fabrics or latex or specific uh, shoes. Or, and narcissists are very, very particular. A typical fetishist, for example, he likes feet, let's say feet fetishes, foot fetishes. He would be not so choosy. A foot is a foot. Yeah, he likes this kind of food, that kind of food, but generally he likes feet. Not the narcissist. Narcissists has, has, have a highly specific foot. So they are very extremely detailed in, the, in their demands. They would go hours, days, months, until they find the right, right woman, body part, object. They would invest huge, inordinate amounts of, in, in micromanaging and orchestrating and directing the scene. And, they, and if you deviate from the sin, they would, they would go ballistic, they would become furious, and, and so on. So why? Because it's a ritual. It's a religious ritual. Try to go to the Catholic Church and talk during Mass. I mean, it's, it's very religious, the whole thing. Nazi sexuality is part of his religion, which is one God, the false self, one worshiper, the narcissist. And the sex is part of this religion. When he brings the woman, it's a human sacrifice. He sacrifices the woman to his God. And indeed, narcissistic sexual acts with, uh, in this context of BDSM, they look a lot like human sacrifice. They, if you think about it, there's a, sometimes blood, sometimes tying, tying up. Sometimes it's a lot like, I mean, bordering on human sacrifice uh, in many cases. Even when the, even when the narcissist engages in uh, innocent things, theoretically, like fetishes with bras or fe foot fetish or whatever, even then he would ritualize the whole thing to have very, very powerful religious uh, overtones. So he would, for example, prefer goddess worship with, with feet, N not just feet. He, he would introduce religious elements. Um, this I cannot emphasize enough. Narcissism is not a mental health disorder in the classic sense. It's a religion. And to understand anything on narcissists, including their sexuality, you must think religious. Of course, there's a lot of sexuality in Christianity, if you look at it. And a lot of BDSM in Christianity. Many of the martyrs and the saints, they went through BDSM practices, sexual practices. And, and there's a lot of, uh, so it's an example of a religion with strong, very powerful sexual, sexually emphasized elements, including homosexual emphasized elements. And, and uh, I mentioned Christianity just an, uh, as an example. You can mention any other religion. And the same with the narcissist. He has a highly private religion within which he worships also via sex. And he has to sacrifice hum, human sacrifices. So women come handy because 
that way he can punish him. 